This video is going to be about how to add natural looking background blur to any image using Photoshop. Wait. That's better. So the background blur that we're going to create is kind of like portrait mode on your iPhone or whatever, but instead of it looking really fake, oh, we're no, going to maintain it. the depth. So whatever's closer is going to be a little bit more in focus than what's further away, which is going to be more blurry. To start, we're going to take our image and copy that layer. So control J, then we're going to go click the eyeball to hide the top one, go to the bottom one, and we're just going to go over to filter, blur, and we're going to go Gaussian blur. Make it reasonably blurry, but make sure you can still see some details in your image. Click OK. We're not going to really use this. This is just a, a reference. OK, then put back our original layer here and click on it. And then we're going to put a mask on it. So that's this box with a little circle in it. What a mask allows you to do is use the brush tool to erase when you have a black brush and bring things back when you have a white brush. So we're going to start by using a black brush and going up here to change the size to a fairly large size. So that's pretty good. Just make sure like that would be too small and you don't need it to be humongous like that. So somewhere in the middle is good. Make sure your hardness is around 50 and opacity at 100. And then all we're doing is we're going to do a blurry perimeter. So just trace along the outside of your subject and you'll see around the edges it'll start getting blurry because we are basically erasing around it. So let's get rid of our background layer and we can really see that we just made a path around it. And then I'm going to fast forward through this but erase all the rest of it. I made my selection like this because it's fast and easy and it works for the project that we're doing. But feel free to use whatever other selection methods work for you. The next thing we're going to do is bring back our background so we can see that this is what we kept in focus and then the background behind is blurry. So if we look at our mask, we can see that the white section is the part that we kept from our original image and the part that we painted black is now gone, meaning that the blurry parts that we see are actually from our background layer. We now need to create something called a depth map on our mask where we're going to use different opacities of our white brush to simulate varying shades of gray for everything in our image that lies between 100% white, which is our plane of focus and my daughter right here, and essentially 0% white, which is black for all the stuff that's going to remain erased and blurry. For everything else, we're going to apply a different opacity of white depending on how far away it is from our plane of focus. So things that are close to our plane of focus, like my son standing here, is going to have an opacity that's a little bit higher, so 30 to 40 percent, compared to something like this couch, which will have an opacity that is much lower, like 10 to 15 percent. If we look at this image overall, you can see that there, I also painted a little bit of this table and chair over here and I painted a little bit in the foreground here. So this part that's fully erased right here, that's going to be more blurry than this kind of faded section here and then it's going to get back into focus by the time it hits my daughter's foot. Now that I'm back to my main image, I'm going to start creating that depth map on this mask. Starting with maybe a opacity of about 35 and a fairly large brush but not crazy big, maybe somewhere around there, and hardness at zero. And all I'm going to do on this mask is I'm going to start painting over this table here because it's kind of close to it. It's the closest thing to us so I'm going to give it some depth. So as and you can see as I paint over this, it's not bringing it fully back into focus but it's bringing it somewhat back into focus. And I'll do the same thing to the this edge over here. So now that we have that done, we can look over here on the mask and you can see some of that gray that was painted in. So the white is still what's fully in focus, the black is still blurry, and the gray is kind of somewhat of this in focus and then some of this blurry background kind of mixed in. On a side note, make sure you stay clicked when you're painting. No matter how many times I go over it, as long as I stay clicked, it's going to paint one layer of opacity 48%. But if I undo that 
and I click do a little bit and then I unclick and then try and do a little bit and then unclick and try and do a little bit, it's gonna create a very uneven depth map, which you might not see in your image, but if we look over at the mask, you can see all these like blotchy patches and that's not gonna look good in the end. If you do make a mistake by either painting too much or creating a, an uneven like blotchy depth mask, then you can obviously go edit undo or control Z to go back, but in extreme cases, you might have to go back to black and paint it all back in and restart for that whole section. Next, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna keep it at about 33 and I'm gonna make it even bigger. And this is just gonna take care of some of this foreground down here, because whatever's in the foreground is also the most in focus. So, and I'm gonna hit that desk, that table again on this pass. And if we look over here, it added that extra little strip there. And then I'm gonna drop this opacity down to like, 10 to 15 and I'm gonna do it just a strip kind of through there and then I'm gonna even drop it one more and I'm gonna do another kind of strip right there and you can see over here that it's kind of like a gradient it goes from dark lighter like white down here to gray as we get further away now I'm not gonna to touch anything back here because I think that still has to stay black because that's supposed to be blurry but I might come in here and touch up some of this again so I'm gonna turn this back up to maybe 20, change this size down a bit, and I'm just gonna go over a couple of these details. So maybe add an extra little bit on this guy, maybe an extra little bit kind of right there along this edge, cause it's protruding towards us a little bit more. And then I'll hit up the uh, water bottle one more time to give it just a little bit more in focus. Now it's time to apply the actual blur. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna click back on our main thumbnail and we're gonna go up to filter, blur, and we're gonna go to lens blur this time. In lens blur, there's only a few things we have to worry about. We wanna make sure we're on source layer mask and we wanna make sure that our subject is in focus. If you go in here and this is blurry, just make sure you click invert here and then it'll put the focus back on our subject and the blur back over here. The most important thing we have to deal with though is radius. And for me right now, I'm just gonna crank it all the way up to 100 and that'll make the most blurry background possible based on what was black, but it won't blur what was white and it'll blur what was in the grays just slightly less or gradually less as it gets closer to white. You can play around with these other things if they enhance your image in any sort of way. If you move these around and you like what they do, then you can do those, but I don't think I'm gonna to touch anything there, and I'm just gonna click OK. And then there's only one more thing for us to do. We have to go over to our mask, click on it, right click, and disable layer mask, and that's gonna apply the lens blur that we just did. So there's the after, and there is the before. And that's how you use a depth map to create a natural looking background blur in Photoshop.